I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm going to punch you once every second for the next 35 seconds. Okay. That is not variable. Seven components of force variability. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. And the effect on connective tissue. Okay, cool. Um, we've actually talked about this. I think Manuel, you, Manuel asked the question about variability, I think a while back. And um, so do you understand what variability is first and foremost, as far as is, is it being applied to the, to the movement? Uh, I mean, I would assume it's just the way that the other components of force change uh, over okay. time. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm going to punch you once every second for the next 35 seconds. Okay. That is not variable. Right. Okay. Right, I'm hitting right, right. you right. at the same rate, same pace. Everything is the same. So it's boom, boom, boom. Okay. And then, then I'm going to change it. And now I'm going to make it like a combination of threes, a one, a one, two, a one, two, a one, two, five. Okay. Mm -hmm. You get it. Yep. Okay. So one is, one is, one has a, a very specific frequency and one is variable. Okay. So far so good. Right. right. Okay. All right. Then let's look at it from a connective tissue standpoint. So I'm going to take a piece of connective tissue and I'm going to do that. So this is you getting punched in the face once every second for 35 seconds, okay? And so there's a very specific uh, uh, expansion and release, right? Of that connective tissue, right? So it's going to elongate to a certain degree and then it's going to uh, recompress to a certain degree. You follow so far? Okay. If I pull it long, it stores a certain amount of energy and then I let it release and it releases a certain amount of energy. Okay. And it's not perfect because we have heat that, that is released when we stretch and release connective tissue energy. Okay. But, but let's just say um, for the sake of argument that, that whatever degree I stretch it, I release the same amount of energy. Okay. All right. So if I stretch it to this length every time, and then it, as I start to release it and I pull on it again before it releases all of its energy, it's in a different representation of stiffness and capacity of energy storage and the ability to release energy. So okay. if I pull it long and I only release this much and I pull it again and then I release all of it and then I pull it long again and I release all of it and I pull it long again, I only release part of it and I pull it long again, the tissue behaves differently, okay? So if you, if you jump over a hurdle and you stick the landing and you allow all the force to dissipate, it's different than if I jump over the, the hurdle, land and immediately jump again. So, so the, the right. behavior right. of the tissue changes based on the rate of loading. So remember, all components of force are always in play. Right. Okay. We separate right. them out so we can, so we can distinguish the, the influence of, of those qualities. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically what you're doing is you're creating a state of connective tissue behavior that is either similar to something that somebody might have to do as an athlete, or I'm trying to get the tissue to behave in a certain way. So let's just say that I have somebody that is very, very stiff and I want to make them less stiff. All right. So do I want them to bounce across the ground very quickly? See, okay. So you're catching on already. You understand. It's like, it's like, you're not releasing all the energy. So I'm not getting the full, I'm not getting this full excursion of connective tissues. So, so therefore they're kind of staying in this, this small range of excursion that may not buy me the, the yielding action that I would want if I'm trying to, to translate somebody from a very, very stiff, like take a power lifter and try to make him into a basketball player. It won't work, but point being, you understand what I'm getting at. So, so what we want to do when we're thinking about variability is like, okay, what is this person going to need to be exposed to 
right, in their sport? It, do I have a variable representation of different connective tissue behaviors? So I need to recognize that. And then the activities that I choose in preparing them for their sport should probably include that type of a behavior. So if, if they need variability, do you ever see the, uh, uh, there's a great, I can't think of his name now. He's a shot putter. And he's doing like a whole bunch of explosive stuff. And he does like- Werner uh, Gunther. Say, say it again. War Werner Gunther. Yes, there you go. Thank you. Um, he's doing a whole bunch of different, like he does a jump sequence that is just ridiculous. Like he should get, he should have gotten a gold medal for just doing the jump sequence because it was so cool to see. He does like, a, he does like barbell side split squats. And then he does a series of like hurdle jumps. And then he just keeps going and then he jumps up a whole bunch mm -hmm. of bleachers. It was, it's just really cool to watch a, a gigantic human being do this. He's, he's like a, a really big dude, but, but that is a variable representation yeah. where, where like the heights are different, the demands are different. So if I jump up on a box, right, I don't have the full yielding action of, of the, of the connective tissues. Right. And so I keep going up and up and up. So there's a different degree of stiffness than if I'm jumping over a high hurdle, jumping over a high hurdle, because the amount of time that for the for the tissues to release is different. OK, so again, that's so that's looking at it from a performance aspect. It's like, OK, I want to I want to influence this connective tissue so it behaves appropriately during performance. On the other end of the spectrum, if I have somebody that that has a, a movement based problem, like in, in, in my world in the purple room, I can use, I can use the, the variability to create the, the degree of stiffness or the degree of yielding action that they may need um, in a dynamic sense. So once we get to the point where, the, where they can have some element of control, now I take them out into the gym, okay? And, and now I can pay attention to rate. So if I need somebody that, that behaves a little bit stiffer, I might use some sort of preloading of the connective tissues, right? So, so that they yield. And as they start to release, they're, they're becoming stiffer. And then I hit it again, right? And, and so now they have a, a normal representation of the, the energy storage and release of connective tissues um, that will protect them, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, so, could you could you give a quick example of what you just described? Uh, take a box squat. Yeah. Okay. Um, take a box squat, and if you do a full load on a box squat, you're going to yield more than if you did a touch and go. Okay. So if I want somebody's connective tissues to behave more stiff, more stiffly, stiffer, more stiffer, more stiff. I don't know. It's early. Uh, if I, if I want stiffer connective tissue behavior, right? So what I might do is I might say, okay, deload to the box first and then spend less time on the box and then less time on the box and then touch and go. And then, and you see what I'm getting at? Okay. Right. Um, you can also do this where you would do like um, uh, maybe a jump up to another box where you would start them on just a simple box squat, deload, mm -hmm. less time on the box, touch and go, and then jump. Right. So I'm sort of ramping up the stiffness, if you will. Right. Versus somebody that's going from like a full yielding action that might be what we would deem um, less than ideal. So somebody that might like a, a tall, slender volleyball player that that might have a lot of eccentric orientation, a lot of yielding capabilities, but not a lot of turnaround. So, so the vertical jump is is a little bit lower than you would like it to be. And so again, you transition them into a faster and faster loading representation. So the tissue becomes stiffer and then you turn that into the more explosive activity. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the, the seven components of force, it's just, it's, it's like if I were to observe somebody doing an activity over a certain period of time, it's like I would need, if I really want a representation of what's going on, I need to have all of those just in my head like like not necessarily like mulling over them like crazy um but like if i wanted to just write it all down um yeah. it, it's it's like you just have to you have to think about each and every one of those and then variability isn't really it's like in seems like it's 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 largely like an interplay of a lot of the factors because um of a lot of the other six components 
um, you could you can definitely look at that perspective, or you could look at it from one perspective and change the variability. So so variability of load. Okay. Yeah, okay. So if I used a weight releaser, you know what a, a weight releaser is? Yeah. Okay. So if I so I I, I do the the lowering phase in a in a heavy squat with a weight releaser, right? And I release the weight at the bottom. I immediately change the loading on the connective tissues, and I get this really cool spring back from the connective tissues from that type of a of a load and release. So that's variability there within one single repetition. Right. So again, it's it's the the, the important thing to understand is number one, I need to have an intent, and then then you can construct the activity. To, to meet those specific needs. So we could look at variability in, in regards to direction. So if I'm training a 100 meter sprinter, the amount of lateral agility activities that he needs to perform is uh, slim, right? Okay, because we want to keep him on a straight line. And so compare him to a soccer player. And so again, you look at constructing variability from, from direction. I got variability of force. I have variability of load, right? Right. And so again, okay. it's, it's looking at the behavior that, that you want as the outcome, understanding enough about the person that you're, that you're looking at. And like I said, then you can kind of construct the activities. Now, let me, let me caution you that um, some of these activities are rather intensive. And so you still need to construct an adaptation to get them to wherever their their end result or, or ideal outcome would be, so don't don't rush the process because connective tissues um, will rebel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. That was a good question.